Good evening and welcome back to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral Far. The best weekend of the year? Maybe. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a lengthy debate about that. But uh, what a cracking two days of racing we've got for you. And what a cracking two days of racing we've just had as well. Uh, summer might well be over, but uh, the autumn is uh, alive and, uh, and kicking. And uh, what an arc. What an arc we've got. Uh, I'm sure plenty of you will be uh, flying out uh, to, uh, to Paris. Probably uh, a lot easier to fly out to Paris than it is to get a train anywhere uh, this weekend. So it might well be worth going to, uh, to Paris instead of, say, uh, Bristol or anywhere closer to you uh, to, uh, to see uh, a right old matchup, uh, including, uh, obviously, the spectacular race impact trying to uh, do something that uh, no horse has done since 2004 and win the arc unproven over the trip. Uh, but it's not only that, we've also got uh, Nouveau Marché, of course, uh, with the, uh, the Cambridgeshire and some fantastic two-year-old action, warm favourites in the first four races tomorrow as well. And, uh, and I'm sure, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, some, uh, some nice priced winners, uh, maybe a combination tri-cast uh, of horses drawn 25 and up in the Cambridgeshire, uh, uh, only to see one on the far side uh, do you into third. Uh, but uh, either way, whatever you uh, you want to get involved in uh, over the course of the weekend, we're going to be going through the new market card tomorrow, uh, talking about the ARC as well. Quite frankly, it's that good a weekend, we could do a three-hour show. Uh, but uh, like I said, because of the trains, none of us would get home. Uh, get in touch on the chat box uh, uh, and, uh, and like the stream, because we are live and interactive uh, as ever. Uh, but uh, not as ever, because uh, we've got a bit of a treat tonight. Um, we've got two people in the studio. <laughs> Neither of them are Tom Siegel. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're a little bit disappointed about that. Uh, however, we do have Keith Melrose and Simon Clare in the studio. Two human faces <laughs> in here, which I'm uh, honestly, now, I've, now I'm looking at you both, I don't know who to talk to. So I'm not used to this. You all right, gents? I'm well, how are you? I'm the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me, a nice human face. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, yeah. You've got, you've got a lovely human face, uh, Keith. Lovely, um, thank you. The rest of you, <laughs> not so sure. Um, cracking weekend. Oh, yeah, certainly. I mean, I've got, I was just we're saying off here, I did my first arc last year. It's hard, and it's the best race in the world where they don't jump anything. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's a fantastic weekend coming up, and you, you, you almost, and slap your wrist for doing this, but you almost forget about new market and how good that card is and mm. you know the, the utility this will have next season with all these good two-year-old races. What I always uh, like Simon is that if you do go to Paris for the art you know who's English by who is watching a race on their phone <laughs> uh, because you know that the, 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 the French race goes aren't watching new market but the English race goes away oh the Cambridge is off the Cambridge is off I'm back in this yeah um, so it is it's a, it's a cracking double header it is brilliant, and I'm very envious. Um, you know, going for the two days is always a yep. brave move, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I, I'm not going this year. I don't know if I'm actually at Jack Dor Jack Dor's Castle tomorrow for a Coral Racing Club visit. Um, we're looking at the jumpers. That'd be good fun seeing John Joe and the team there, and I'll be watching the racing over the a two days. A jumping stable visit on the on our I know. <laughs> John Joe Neal said it was a good day to do it, so we yeah, did well, I mean, it. Is for him, I mean, it? Yeah, also, it's, you know, the, the cans are so weird this year, the way the dates fall. Even in my mind, I think a few a couple of months ago, I was presuming the art would be next weekend. Mm. And there's this gap yeah. between it's it, everything is, is sort of spread out a little bit more in some ways. But um, but I've done the art many many times, you know, and I've been very lucky enough to work for, through work. It, the, the old Longchamp was, yeah. you know, it was an extraordinary structure, you know, and I think they've they've certainly modernised it with the new one, but it has it does it does lack some of the uh, lost its charm, lost a bit of the charm, yeah. but it's um, but it's also I've, I've had lots of you know good nights in Paris on the Saturday night, turning up on Arc Day, feeling a bit a bit under the weather, as they say, yeah, tired yeah. and emotional, and it's it's I, I think it's, I remember um, it's quite a challenging trip to pace yourself on because the bar of Paris you know are quite appealing <laughs> well and also you know you've got because yeah you, you fly out and then you you know you, you port my o if you're on the the metro or whatever and then yeah. and then everyone piled onto a bus so I remember back back in a, a horse in the Abbey and ev cramped onto a bus and again try, <laughs> trying to watch it because we were running late uh but <laughs> um, get home. And anyway none of us are none of us are there no this no, weekend. No, it's, uh, no, it is no. a shame I, I am it is it is fantastic and like I said, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure plenty of people, I know someone who's flying out mm. tomorrow night and coming back Sunday night, and a lot of people do that. Yeah, um, I can't imagine doing that. Yeah. I did the full sort of weekend thing last year, Friday to the Monday, I'd feel too rushed. Yeah. But you wouldn't do Disneyland in a day. No, no. So uh, it depends on how much sugar you had before, I guess. Well, that's true, but like, this is our Disneyland arc weekend a little bit, isn't it? And, yeah. Uh, very similar. You, you so you're similar. suggesting Longchamp is Disneyland for <laughs> Well, also, adults. getting out of Longchamp on that Sunday, trying to get taxis, oh, that is hell. Yeah. So if you're trying to get to the, you know, to the Garden North, the Eurostar, or the airport, yeah. so it's definitely a, a stress-free trip if you decide to go yeah. back on Monday and just accept that it's going to be a big Sunday night. And then a <laughs> well, I, 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 hope it, I hope the race is good enough uh, 
uh, for oh, it's going to be great, isn't it? It's going to always is uh, always great. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's enough of us uh, uh, rhapsodising about <laughs> uh, about uh, uh, the uh, the arc. Uh, we uh, we're going to go to uh, to Tom Siegel at home, who's going to tell us how he doesn't particularly like the race. Would never go to Longchamp on a month of Sundays, uh, and is uh, is thrilled to bits that he's the only one who isn't in the studio. Good evening, Tom. <laughs> you stole my thunder. <laughs> All three of them, you got spot on, Ross. <laughs> what about uh, never mind never mind this arc rubbish the best races are at Newmarket that's the four isn't it that's the four yeah well, I've never been to the arc never will not interested in that uh, yeah the best the Cambridge is so much more interesting than them than those races for me I, I love it I've always liked the Cambridge so it's always been a race I've had a really good record in over the years so I've always sort of thought I know what's required in the Cambridge where I've got a terrible record in the arc so hence why I have no interest in that race really mm, fair enough we were just talking about uh, you know or favourite art winners or art winners we've backed. What's your favourite Cambridgeshire winner? Oh, blimey. Uh, Pipe Dreamer was one. Blue Monday was another. Oh, yeah. Blue Monday was good, wasn't it? I mean, that's... Educate. I was just no. going to say, Simon's off to see New Order. <laughs> so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a nice little crossover yeah, there. Is, yeah. But yeah, sorry, what was the other one? Uh, educate. There were quite oh. a few. Lord North. There's been plenty over the years. I like the race. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't wait to, uh, to, uh, to hear what you've picked out tomorrow, I'm sure, lumping on the 7th Street favourite, uh, guaranteed. Uh, but uh, good evening to everyone. Off World, Darren Walker, Tom Leach, Fezzi Mack, uh, Jonathan Sherratt, everyone who's, uh, who's uh, listening uh, uh, and watching at home. A few people saying, where is Keels? Uh, uh, he's in America, um, isn't he? I think he's, yes, in, he's still in America, America isn't he? Yeah. He's on holiday, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Where exactly in America, I don't know. There was a, he gave me the itinerary when I saw him the other yeah. week, and there was yeah. Tennessee, there was Texas, there was a bit of Washington, D.C., I've just got a picture now of Keels on the back of a giant motorcycle going down Route 66, <laughs> doing like a US road trip. I think he is doing some form of road trip though, so um, yeah, it's a shame, it's a shame Why we filmed, filmed and followed yeah. him on his tour. Oh yeah, I mean, you should have told Dave the producer, he'd have yeah, definitely he'd Keels does America, wouldn't he? I mean, to, I mean, to be fair Simon, you're the one who'd be paying for it, so you yeah. it's, it's, it should, I'd should be on that side, it would be great fun. Um, right, uh, let's uh, let's get stuck into uh, to new market tomorrow then, and then we'll have a chat about uh, at the arc as well, and anything else to uh, to throw into the mix because there's a fantastic card at uh, at Longchamp uh, on Saturday, and of course uh, plenty of old favourites as well. Of course, uh, at the at the foray, I'm sure we'll. Uh, get a, 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 quite a bit of interest from uh, from Mr. Siegel, if not uh, everyone else. Uh, we'll get stuck into that first race at Newmarket after this. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis, and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content, from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. There we go. Uh, lovely stuff. Before we get stuck into that, uh, Simon Clare, um, what price boosts do you have for, for us for the next ooh, 50 minutes? Exactly. Yeah, we're nice, nice link at you. You mentioned the foray. These are two um, in the know price boosts relating to Sunday's racing. Uh, Kinross, who's five to six at the moment, won last year, fourth the year before, doesn't look a super strong field at all for the foray. Uh, it's five to six on the book now, but we're going to go five to four for the next 50 minutes. So if you want to just secure what looks a bit of value um, on Kin Ross uh, in the foray uh, on Sunday. And then an English trained horse to win the art, which currently is priced at six to four, Hookham, Westover, Baybridge, free wind running for you. We're gonna go nine to four for the next uh, 50 minutes. So again, if you're feeling patriotic and you just want to back all the, the English in a, in a, in a, ro in a, in a, in a roll up bet, uh, nine to four for the next 50 minutes. Okay, there we go. Uh, right, so we'll get to that uh, very shortly. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, with the Royal Lodge uh, over uh, a mile for the two-year-olds, the Group Two contest, uh, where uh, Capulet is two to one favourite. Ablan and Ghostwriter are four to one. Eleven to two, Al Musmac. Uh, Macduff is twelve to one uh, with uh, with Defiance. Uh, Sixteen to one, Caviar Heights. Twenty to one, uh, and bigger the rest. Uh, never mind the the form book. Surely the. Uh, the Shakespeare reverse forecast is the angle in here for this 150 at Newmarket. But uh, are we going to see a good Royal Lodge winner? Are we going to see a Frankel or a, uh, a Roaring Lion? Or are we going to see a, a Mohawk or a Best of Days? That is the question. Uh, Capulet, 
interesting. Obviously, again, it is a Ballydor runner. Big run last time out, so obviously they're going to put this horse in uh, in short. But we've seen uh, the two-year-old races uh, so far at Newmarket, Keith. Um, it's just, I mean, all three of the two-year-old races to uh, tomorrow at Newmarket have got fairly warm favourites. Um, are we expecting uh, horses to improve past the uh, the lights of? Well, I say improve past the lights of Capulet. This is the one where the favourite's still a bit unexposed. Yeah, he's only had the two runs, hasn't he? And uh, yeah, the two-year-old division is sort of crying out for some stars. I think it's fair to say it's not been the most. It's not been a particularly vintage crop. You know, I looked at the Middle Park and the uh, Morney that that's based on is bang average. Yeah, it's still one of the best two-year-old performances of the year from Van Dijk. Uh, I I was looking through this race and a horse set off my good horse alarm. Uh, and it's a horse that's not capital. Is that internal or do you actually have one <laughs> no, on the it's, desk? It's just in my head, like Babylon's burning by the rut starts playing or something and it's, right, you know, okay, that yeah. intro comes in and, and uh, but it was Ghost Rider. I don't know if we watched that at Ascot. Now you're a time yeah. figures, Baron, it's the time of this was quite impressive as well, but what caught my eye first was a visual impression. Mm -hmm. When she, uh, William Buick, sorry, was pressed a button on him, two out, he just lengthened right up, went right away from him, still green because he hung. Uh, once he was once he was in the clear, but just looked like a really really talented horse, and the time compared extremely well with Kino uh, on the the fall in, uh, half an hour later in an open age race. You know, he carried a lot more weight than him. Yeah. Kino ran to an RPR of one oh nine, and you know this is a two year old that's putting up comparative figures. It was a very slightly slower time and a faster finish. Yeah. So would you see the visual impression and see it get backed up like it was? I I've had a tiny little bet on this horse for the guineas just in case. Okay. Really, really impressed. I think, you know, it's Jeff Smith, but it's, it's Clive Cox that trains this horse. I think if Andrew Balding had trained this horse, who's a, a trainer you associate a little bit more with that classic type, mm. I think this horse would be a lot, a lot more se taken seriously for the Guineas at this stage. Is, uh, pedigree wise, and obviously the Royal Lodges, they're not more chance of the Guineas being a little bit short. Next well, year. the two of the last four Guineas winners run in this, and mm. uh, Frankel obviously won it as well. Yeah. It's, this is becoming as much of a Guineas, you know, this is either a stepping stone in the futurity, or it is often a Guineas. The Guineas horses are running over a mile at two a lot more yeah. than would have been the case maybe 10 years ago, I think. And, you know, this pedigree, Invisible Spirit on one side, is quite stiff on the dam side. I think the dam stayed a mile and a half plus, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's that sort of mixed pedigree that. that um, Coolmore utilised pretty well to, to, to get milers and he just looks like a horse that I think if he wasn't trained by Clive Cox who's got that association with sprinters more, yep. I think he'd be taken more seriously for the classics next year and I hope he proves it tomorrow. Okay, ghost rider then for, uh, uh, for Keith, but, uh, yeah, Capulet at the, uh, the top of the betting here Tom, so we'll go from Romeo to Juliet at home <laughs> and uh, what, do you, uh, <laughs> what do you make of the Royal Lodge tomorrow? Uh, agree with Keith, ghost rider, excellent time. A uh, little bit worried that he hung. It's, I think it's going to be very fast ground tomorrow at Newmarket, unless he waters tonight, which I don't think I don't know if he's going to. Uh, I thought it was quite quick today. I think there's due to be loads of sun, bit of wind around. It could be very fast tomorrow. I'd be slightly worried about him on very quick ground going down the hill because he did hang, hang at uh, Ascot and pedigree Champs Elysees at Dam uh makes me think he might be better. It just might be a struggle for me. On that ground, I think Capulet will love it. I think he looked. It was interesting that they sort of slightly backed him against the stable mate, didn't they? At uh, Leps Down mm. last. I, think I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a few people, uh, Tom, that were saying, you know, it was a bit of maybe shame. He should have put, well, a, bit, well, put a bit more elbow grease in, and, the, and the, uh, the, it might have turned around. Ross, have they? Have, has anyone landed on the moon? <laughs> uh, you and your conspiracy theories, uh, I don't know. It's I don't not know. me, it's not me, it's, it's, uh, it's just the, the social media feed who obviously have backed, have backed this horse each way <laughs> and wanted the win. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I, the Royal Lodge always seems to me a bit of a second division race, I think, I don't know, I don't know, since it's gone to Newmarket, I, I don't I, I wonder if that, if Capulet's right in their top, top rank, I don't know. I don't know. I thought Ablan was quite impressive at stand and I think he's going to love the step up in trip. He's another one. He's by Dubawi, so you wouldn't really be wanting him to have the ground to be too quick. Uh, earlier in the week, I did have a few quid on Ghost Rider at a much bigger price than he is now. I'm sort of, well, I obviously hope he wins, but I am worried about the ground and I do think Ablan is a big danger. I think the two at the top from the, from the highest, you know, from the best stables in the, in the world, probably are very dangerous but I, I do think Ablan's going to improve and finish off the race really well so so be surprised if he picked him up over a mile if he picked Ghost Riper up over a mile okay 
Yeah, I, I was very interested in Ablan because um, the, the dam won the rock fell and, uh, and she really improved going up in trip as well. And I get the feeling this horse has been getting away with it over seven, uh, but kind of winning impressively because things haven't been going to plan. So I think that extra furlong is going to be, be key. But the dam raced four times, was really good, promising run, but raced four times on good to firm and, and never won. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that ground is really fast. And it clearly is quite fast because really Rally's been pulled out at the Shuley Park we just heard. And yeah. I assume that's ground related, is it? You've got to assume so. I mean, mm. yeah. yeah, it was. It was the times were fairly quick today, weren't they? And, yeah. Yeah. and Tom said it's not forecast to really be that wet from here, so it could end up being quite quick tomorrow. I assume that's why Ruby mm. Valley's out. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, is there a horse in here with genuine fast ground form in the opener? I don't think there is, is there? So. Well, you're not Royal Lodge horses. These horses are really, you know, they're not really proper fast ground horses, yeah, are no, they? They're so not, you'll, you'll they're find not really that, racing in high summer, are they? But. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, they're probably only starting out in high summer and getting their yeah. you know, first runs. The only thing you'd say is uh, the... And Brian horses by Justify, with his knee out of a Galileo mare, you'd expect him to like it. You know, on pedigree, you'd think he'd want fast ground. So whether that, whether, whether that swings things in his favour, I don't know. Uh, just having a look um, pedigree-wise on the, uh, the going. Who, yeah, yes. I mean, uh, See the Stars, obviously, has a, has a yeah. very, very good record on fast ground. So we've got Vimiero, Caviar Heights and, and Macduff. Um, but uh, Capulet, Justify, good to firm, only nine runners, but yet to have a winner. I'm good to firm. That me. So, could be, could be a little bit interesting. Um, anyway, Royal Lodge, uh, Simon and Claire, any offers, any angles, any thoughts? We do have a, a, an in the nose special. If you fancy Capulet, it's currently trading around two to one. Uh, it was three to one to win by over a le one length. Uh, we're going seven to two. So, if you think Capulet is going to win and win well, you get seven to two to win by. Uh, a length or more. In the market for the last couple of hours, um, Capital is solid, just drifted out to twos from seven to four. And the, and the money really has focused on Ghostwriter and Ablan, everything else drifting. Al Muzmac out to 11 to two, McDuff nines out to 12s, Defiance out to 12s. So at the moment, it looks like there's confidence uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, 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 the co second, the joint second favourites. Um, and for me, I think Ablan, you know, look, you know, won the Solario, looks like he's going to appreciate the step up and trip. Charlie Appleby's got, had 10 winners from 30 runners, Yard bang back in form. Um, and, you know, one thing, Aidan O'Brien's run 26 year olds in, in Britain this year. He's won with four, you know, he, mm -hmm. and, and his horses are always favoured for these races. And mm -hmm. some pop up and win and win in press, he's here, Troy, etc. And then, then there's others which get better. But it's almost always, um, he, he'll, his prices, his horses will be, you know, uh, yeah, underpriced, won't they, I think, yeah. generally. So that even lends up a little bit more to maybe, you know, if you fancy Ghost Rider or Ablan, you're probably getting a little bit of innate value anyway. So uh, I'll yeah. probably be in the Ablan camp. Okay, I mean, it is, it's still an open race, though, isn't it? I mean, Al Musmak was really impressive last time out. Obviously, that Rosalian form, um, despite the, the winner disappointing, everything else has come out and won pretty much. Uh, Defiance is unexposed. Caviar Heights is unexposed and up to a mile as well. At Vimiero, big eye catcher last time out. And this is a big uh, big jump for uh, for that horse. But it could be an interesting race tomorrow. Ghost Rider and Avalanche, probably at least as good as Capulet, says uh, 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 Fife Keef or Fief Kaif, either way. Depending on. I don't know which one you're going to choose. Uh, the Royal Lodge angle? Yeah, Ghost Rider for me. Ghost Rider it is. Uh, I, 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 was, I, I had suspicions, but um, <laughs> people say you write your own stuff, Keith. No. Uh, I'll go with, uh, with Ablan. What about you, Tom? Well, I've backed Ghost Rider, but uh, I'm, I am very worried about Ablan tomorrow. I think he's oh. going to take a massive step forward. And Simon? I'm Ablan for me. Okay, there we go. That's the uh, the Royal Lodge. Uh, moving on to the uh, the Shuvi Park Stakes. Apparently, relief rally. It's not ground related. Uh, uh, she has uh, scoped badly, so she will not uh, be running. Interesting. That's actually um, the, uh, uh, the. I don't know how to get to this without explaining. It. Do stuff for a, a, a syndicate called Ratio, who have a two-year-old with William Haggis, uh, and uh, who was due to run at Pontefract yesterday and scoped badly. So. Uh, and that, so that horse was pulled out. So interesting. Just keep an eye on those mm. those Haggis mm. horses, the Haggis two-year-old. And obviously, we've had a few, a couple of Haggis horses run a bit, bit below par. Obviously, uh, Maljoom today. Mm. Could it be? Might be worth interesting. Yeah. Keeping an eye on. Or it could be more conspiracy theories. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that leaves just the secret. It's 94 favourites. Soprano, 4 to 1. Sacred Angel, 5 to 1. Port of Fortuna is 13 to 2. With Cherry Blossom, Persian Dream is 10 to 1. Juniper Berry is also uh, absent here. She's quality, Symbology, Jabara, Pearls and Rubies. Uh, and uh, 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 the Michael Bell horse, of which I definitely can't pronounce, is the outsider of the bunch. Uh, but yeah, this race will be kind of blown wide open now. Um, 
Uh, Tom, by relief rally's uh, absence, but there's still plenty of interest. Obviously, the French Raider in Jazz, the secret. Soprano, who should have won by half the track last time out. Uh, Sacred Angel, who brings that Van Dijk form. Uh, Royal Ascot form from Porto Fortuna. Uh, what did you, what jumped out at you before relief rally was absent? <laughs> before relief rally was absent was relief rally. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, okay. I think she's by far the best two year old filly we've seen this season. I thought she was really impressive at York. I thought she would have won this easily. I think she's different class to Soprano and Sacred Angel. But she's out. I don't know enough about Jasna Secret. I am interested in the fact that Wafnan Racing have bought her because they have obviously got a bottomless pit and they go around buying any horse that's done a good figure. And she must have done a good figure. I, I haven't really checked that out because I thought Relief Rally was a good thing. But uh, she's by Galloway, which doesn't strike me as six furlong. He was a middle distance Galileo horse. Doesn't strike me as a as a normal sort of pedigree you'd have for a for a cheapy park winner. So I'm you know at nine to four now I'd, I'd take her on. Although it's interesting that Sumion's here, isn't he? Sumion's here and not a long shot. Mm. That's a tip in itself, isn't it? Soprano's just a bit of a bit. Of, I've had a, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit bored of Soprano. Through <laughs> you, Ross. Yeah, I, I, I kind of I know what you mean. Every time, every time this horse runs, I think, oh, this would have a chance. And the, the excuses are starting to rack up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And there was an obvious one at, at uh, Salisbury last time, wasn't there? She sort of preempted the start and then flew home. But it was, wasn't was a great race, was it? Juniper Berry's beat uh, Dorothy Lawrence, was it? And, you know, it was only the same sort of race that you'd, you had up at air last week, the first of Clyde or whatever it's called. So I'd be slightly disappointed if she could win a... Uh, uh, Chiefly Park. Sacred Angel's quite interesting off the front, isn't she, for uh, the Bravehearts, Charlie Braveheart. But I quite liked uh, Portuna for, Porta Fortuna. I just thought that things didn't go right for her last time. Uh, I liked her at Ascot on the fast ground. And I wondered if she might like, uh, bounce back here. I think uh, I, uh, she didn't really stay the seven furlongs in the Moy Glare, I thought. It was a funny race, that, and where they sort of on sort of testing ground or softer ground and I thought she might bounce back over six furlongs here. It'd be interesting to see how Cherry Blossom goes, isn't it? Because hmm. uh, the Paddy Toomey uh, <laughs> of absolutely annihilated her <laughs> looking something ridiculously good uh, would be given a massive boost if she was to win. Persian Dream is a horse I like by Calix Asar I like but I'm a bit worried about the ground for her. It seems to improve on soft ground. Didn't really like it at Aspa, I don't think. So it's ported for Tuna, but uh, only sort of in the last two minutes because I thought really Rally was going to win. <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, Porta for Tuna is a 13 to 2 shot. Um, I, w I would say that I quite like Persian Dream. I, I, I understand about the uh, the ground because she. But there's two ways of arguing this. Has she does she prefer softer ground or does she love Newmarket because she's two from two. Uh, you know, well, one from one on each. Uh, but you can, I think you can excuse the, the York run, and she was in the completely the wrong place at, at Ascot. So I th she looks the overpriced one if she handles a really fast ground. Well, that's the thing. You're making something, you're having to make some jump, aren't you, with all these horses? Yeah. Um, you know, with the, the experience they've got. And it, it really, Fally's made it very interesting. We talked about the favourite there. And it was, and isn't it nice to see Orpen back as a damn sire? Talking about jazz. We've Secret's all been pedigree. saying it. We've all been saying it. <laughs> not seen I was Orpin. saying that on the train. We were all we were all I've a carriage not, sake coming down Orpin. earlier. I have not seen Orpin on a, in a horse's pedigree yeah. in a good race for a long time. He was an Aiden, Aiden O'Brien horse, was he? Orpin? Yeah, it wasn't very good, sir. I saw it. So anyway, just uh, we're talking we were about talking horses' about pedigree. Bad size, and, or, yes, or uh, but I, we mentioned Cherry Blossom very briefly. I thought she'd get more of a mention. Yeah. Uh, she was second to Rally Rally at York, but it was very quick round at York. So we know she's going to handle that. That was 29 days after her debut. Yes, it was her third run, but she only made her debut in July. And we'll come to this a little bit, I think, with the middle part too. I, somebody mentioned about the Royal Lodge being a race of Brian targets. When you're trying to get a fast sire and fast, you know, pred, you're trying to breed for speed, the middle park and the Cheveley Park are your end games a lot of the time. Yeah. And this Cherry Blossom, I wouldn't be surprised if this has been the race for her from the day she debuted in a listed race where she went off favourite. Got beat that day, she was too green, but yeah. improved since. And obviously that second to the Reef Valley, she still hung about the place, still quite green on, yeah. you know, four weeks on from her debut. Then she turned up and finished second to that Paddy Toomey thing. And God knows how that's going to work out. But 
you can see that she she beat everything else. Yeah. Uh, and softer ground. Softer ground. She mm -hmm. possibly didn't quite get the seven. Not quite ready for seven yeah. as well. I thought she was very interesting with the relief rally in the race. And uh, now that relief rally's out, it's removed one of the big hurdles for me. So I was quite keen on Cherry Blossom. Okay. There you yeah. Go. Um, flat race, by the way. I know you're in jumps mode already, but there's no hurdles. No hard oh, <laughs> okay. uh, so just, 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 to, just to add that, I mean, just to add that, I mean, Aidan Brown's won four of the last seven of this. So mm -hmm. I have just mentioned the cap, uh, the, the, his two year olds are often underpriced, um, particularly when they're favourites. He's won this four times, but only once was that with a favourite, with 15 yeah. to 8 favourite. The others were 6 to 1, 14 to 1, 25 to 1. Um, and I, I was sort of looking at it, and Cherry Blossom, you know, that, that, that second is, relief. Is that, is that because, again, Everyone expects the O'Brien horses to be, oh, this horse will be a Guineas or a Derby horse. So actually the sprinters go, Could they're be. not bothered about I mean, sprinters. They and go look, the radar. it may be that he ran more than one, and this, the, the, un, the unconsidered yeah. one won, which is possible well, as well. There's Tina Brism who ran, she ran in the spring and then never came back. She was laser focused on the yeah, Chiefly Park. Right. You really wanted, she, that was the race for her. I think they, they target these six for long two group ones yeah. more than you think now, because Coolmore's really putting that emphasis on speed yeah. these days. It's an interesting I, I, I point. I'd be interested yeah. to see, to do with the, you know, Mullins Mullin's in the bumper, O'Brien. <laughs> in a race that'll be the only one runner because for example I'll just look when Fi Fairyland won he ran I think three or four yeah. um, when Clemmy won there was only one so yeah, but yeah. Anyway. I mean look I, mean, I think we're playing four places we're certainly playing four places before Relief Rally came out I've checked mm. I think we're still playing four places so actually it's it's you know it's ripe for a good each way bet and to me Cherry Blossom at 13 to 2 each way looks a really good bet given O'Brien's form in the race her form I, I was going to sort. I think I was going to tip her each way at a bit of value at eight to one with relief rally in the race. Even though it was hard to think that she might beat relief rally, but the fact that relief rally is there, I think she's a solid bet. Um, and yeah, the four places. Jasmine's secret was probably the best backed against relief rally when relief rally was in, yeah. and she's now ninety four favourite. And there was also money for sacred angle, so the sacred angel rather. So the two, the two sort of the market been talking speaking for Jasmine's uh, secret and uh, sacred angel. But I'd be, I'd be with Cherry Blossom each way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right, okay, there we go. She'll be part then uh, covered. Uh, I, quite, I, I like Persian Dream, but I will have to back Port of Fortuna as well. I do think you know, that fast ground, six furlong Ascot form is, well, it's the same form, isn't it, essentially? Uh, Keith? Yeah, I'm going to have a cherry. Maybe we'll have that each way in Cherry Blossom. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, Cherry Blossom's the one that really interests me in this. I mean, she's still going four places. I'm going to back mm. Port of Fortuna, Cherry Blossom, and Persian Dreamer. Yeah, I'm going you're going to back them all each way. You're going to, you're going to get <laughs> filled in that now, Simon. You know that, yeah. don't you? You're going to <laughs> That's right, the traders are now cursing me. I'm pretty sure he is still four places, I've checked, but anyway. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Confirmed. Getting bold. Tom Siegel. <laughs> yeah, well, I like Port of Virginia. I'm going to uh, give a mention to Jack Davidson's filly as well. She's quality. Not because she's done anything brilliant on the track, uh, although her maiden... Uh, yeah, the, 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 the Newbury time. Uh, the, the, the time at Newbury was very, very good. I was expecting more to come out of that, but the second uh, one the uh, other day. Exactly. And when he won the sprint at... Newbury on Saturday, last Saturday, he said, oh, yeah, and we've got our star, our stable stars running in the uh, Tivoli Park on Saturday. And I thought, blimey, you've just won a group three. Yeah. And this is the stable star. So he he's obviously thinks an awful lot of his quality. And I've got a lot of time for him for, as a trainer. And the fourth horse in the maiden, Prime Art, was incredibly impressive up at air the other day. So the form's worked out a bit well. She got beat by Navassar Island, who was third in a group race as well. So I don't think the form's that bad. I think you have to forgive her last time. She travelled really well mm. in the morning. It didn't get seven furlongs, six furlongs on fast ground. Could see her running well at the front. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, there's a possibility she didn't get seven furlongs, uh, Tom. There's a possibility that she was just way too far back and it all unfolded on the front as well. So, well, that's four horses I'm backing each way then. <laughs> so, okay. It's always, it's always very brave. It's always very brave. Sorry, she's back at six now anyway, isn't yeah, she? So yeah. the, the chances are that they think this is a better trip for her. There we go. Okay, right. That's four horses on back in each way. This is, uh, this is combination trial. Yeah. Let's go. I just think it's very brave when you actually, when you're naming racehorses, you'd always, you'd always want to give them a grand name. You know, like, I mean, they call more like King of Kings, one of guineas, but they're yeah, calling her she's quality. You know, you, you, you know it's, a, it's a risk, isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. She's not going to run it. She ends up Wolverhampton in the winter. <laughs> She's you're in a, you're a bit of trouble, aren't you? She is out. Uh, the dam was called Quality Time, though, so it might actually be uh, less imaginative. Well, I know. It's, it still a, it's still a big name to carry, you know, burden to yeah. carry. You've got to, you've got to run well when you call She's Quality, which yeah. and she's in a group race, which is great. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, we'll see if it's, uh, we'll see if it is uh, a, uh, uh, what is it? What's the word? A uh, premonition? A, yes. Anyway. Whatever. Anyway. Nominative determinism, it's called. That, that is exactly what is it's called. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Nominative determinism. 
That that which I, I think is too many letters, isn't it? Yeah, more than it's in character is that. Just remove all the vowels because you just be able to say it the same anyway. Um, okay, uh, the, uh, the Sheevy Pot then, the, the 225. Uh, what have we got? Tom Leach says, I can't wait for Chepstow in two weeks. Thanks for watching, Tom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on to the, uh, the three o'clock at Newmarket tomorrow, the Middle Park Stakes, a, another six furlong group race this time for the Colts uh, and Van Deek and River Tiber uh, go head to head once again. Uh, 13 to 8 Van Deek to uh, uh, confirm the form, River Tiber is 2 to 1. Task Force is 7 to 1, Jessor is 7 to 1, Lake Forest 11's Elite State is 16, Starlust 16 to 1, uh, given the Beat Boys uh, is 33 to 1 and uh, Sketch. Uh, is the complete outsider of the bunch, uh, albeit um, was sent off 2-1 to one to beat Van Dijk at Goodwood and is suddenly uh, significantly bigger in the, the betting. But Van Dijk versus River Tiber, obviously Van Dijk has uh, won three out of three, looking pretty impressive at Goodwood uh, and getting the better of a, uh, uh, a, a decent, uh, a well-backed uh, French runner uh, at uh, Deauville last time out. But River Tiber possibly wasn't 100%, possibly didn't necessarily get the, uh, the run of the race either, but... You were saying, Keith, the two-year-olds so far this year have been fairly underwhelming, apart mm -hmm. from Van Dijk. Is this where he confirms himself the, the best two-year-old colt, or is this where he, he meets his match on considerably different conditions? Yeah, I'd be, I mean, I just think that the, that form in the morning is easily the best in this race, and I'd be pretty surprised if one of those two horses doesn't win, but that's, yeah. that's all the insight I've got here. I know it's not much, <laughs> but there are twos on between them to win the race or something equivalent to that, so it's not a race I'll be getting heavily involved in. I've, my working position is this lot of two-year-olds isn't up to much. Those horses have shown genuine Group 1 form, and that gives them a bigger edge than they normally even have. Yeah, OK, fair enough. Is there a concern for Van Dijk about Good to Firm, given how uh, he's relished the conditions so far? <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, with these, we, we talked earlier about there's always that unknown about these horses at this stage and yeah. you're going to give horses with that ability the ability he's shown you're going to give them a pass at this stage unless you've got well, pretty tangible reason not to I guess that's it but the, you've got, well, again you've got the two angles to come from there potentially you either say yes you're giving the pass or you say but you're having to take 13 to 8 yeah, about well, it. I'm not, though. I'm not. Yeah, you're not, <laughs> yeah, you're not taking it to eight, to eight. You're not even going near it. Let's have a look at Van Dijk. Uh, what have we got? Havana Gray, 18%, 39 wins from 221 on Good to Firm. So absolutely rock solid on the, the ground, apparently. Uh, but uh, it's, yeah. he's an, he's an excels the damn side. Isn't he fast ground as well? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah so ground, yeah. Yeah. there you go. Yeah, so he might be better, then. No, done. Easy. Yes. OK. Van Dijk, easy. Easy does it. Uh, says uh, says Keith Melrose. What does Tom Siegel say? Is there a concern about the ground? Is there anything that could improve, or is Van Dijk uh, should he be odds on? Uh, on form, he probably should be. But I'm a pedigrees man, Ross, as you well know, and I'm not having Han Havana Gray against Frankel ever in a million years. So for me, it's all about task force. His dad won the Dewhurst uh, and the Guineas. His mum won the GB Park and the Guineas. Don't get many better bred horses than that. He's from a absolute stable that is having an absolute worldy with their two-year-olds in fact they are having a worldy with all their horses he's had loads of horses placed in group races he knows where he stands but for me it's all about task force i hope he wins because he's a properly bred horse not like the other ones that should be running in stupid races around him <laughs> it was interesting though i thought that you won it ripping and you're you wouldn't have thought frankel of you know the special, special duty, duty yeah. you wouldn't have thought that straight to the middle park but that's what beckett said which is an interesting bit of campaigning you know this is the horse in here that's not a sprint this is a horse that's classics next year so i thought there was well an interesting special duty was a, a fantastic two-year-old she was a good two-year-old won two classics <laughs> in the steward as well yeah sorry Frank will want <laughs> yeah well yeah exactly yeah yeah. yeah yeah to be fair but you won actually, the royal lodge so yeah you, but you, t you t actually and yeah, I mean, Frankel was fantastic over seven as a two-year-old as well. Special Duty was fantastic over six. So, um, I mean, ta yeah, t Task Force is... So you're saying Task Force is the, the genuinely the one horse in this race that could surpass this That's onto the one next horse year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If he, was, if, if he won, it's the one he'd, he'd only be excited about if he really won. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're, th you're not thinking yeah. Commonwealth Cup quotes and here, you know what the path is. He would be a really exciting horse for the Guineas if he won. Yeah. I, I think there's... I mean, Tom's got a few Commonwealth Cup quotes, I think, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think, None are broadcastable. Yeah, I say, I'm sure that uh, that column took a bit of editing, Tom. Uh, no, no, it went in straight as it was. Did oh, it? Well, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Uh, but I listen. It, it, I like, as I say, I'm looking all these Group One races at the end of the season. I'm looking for classic horses. I'm not looking for 
stupid sp sprinters. I'm not. They're a waste of time. We're rubbish at them, and we shouldn't be breeding them. But Task Force is totally different. Mm. It's totally different cats to the rest of them. Now, he might not be fast enough. Bandit might be a superstar sprinter that goes and wins group ones like Shaquille does or, what or, or, or whatever. But if there's a horse there that I'm going to get excited about, it's not going to be Bandy. It's a, it might be River Tiber, but I'm not sure he's had a great prep. Don't like horses that sort of had... But then I said that about Aidan O'Brien all the time, and then all oh, Gus rode down goes and does what it does, and all these horses go and do what they do. So, But I, he obviously was injured before the Morney uh, second run back. Don't know. I'm just looking forward to, ta to Task Force. The one at a massive price for me is even worse bred than Vandy. Give me the Beat Boys. Cost a million pounds for a... Wow. Bungle in the jungle at the Ascot sales before Royal Ascot. I think I think you could have bought Bungle in the jungle for a million pounds. Bought his offspring. I don't know exactly. I don't know how many uh, Bollingers the bloke who had who bought him, but whatever. But uh, a million pounds for a Bungle in the jungle takes some doing. But to be fair to him, he ran an absolute blinder at Royal Ascot, and he is clearly a very good horse because he went way too quick. I think under Frankie, he looked like he had River Tiber beat. He was only beaten a length and a half in the end. He would have been second. He, he, he was second on his side. The other ones just sort of collared him on the near side. You can forget his last run. I don't think he was right for his last run on soft ground. And he is very quick. And if the ground's quick and he gets loose on the lead, which he could do because he is fast, I don't think he's a 33 to 1 shot. I'm hoping Task Force wins. And I've backed him. But I might have a little saver on the, on the one down the bottom. Give me the beat boys as well. OK. Uh, Tom Leach says uh, Starless might go well. I think Starless is worth mentioning. He's, um, he's by Zoo Star, out of Beyond Desire, both very good sprinters. Um, and that kept him... I don't know how this horse won the Serenia Stakes last time out. Kind of missed the kick, uh, was wide around the wide outside, came off the bridle a mile from home and, and really knuckled down well to, to beat seven questions in a ray. Uh, a ray won at Newbury, terrible ground last week. Starless not a bit big at 16 to 1? Well, he could be, couldn't he? I mean, I, I, I was sort of shocked when I saw Starlust was supplemented into the race because I was all over Task Force and I thought, well, if Rafe Beckett's yeah. Task Force in there, how come he's telling Fitri Hay to spend 25 grand or whatever it is to get this one in if he doesn't think that's got a chance too? So I, I'm, I'm with you there, Ross. I don't, he's underrated too. I think this is far more open than people are making out. I think that the two at the top do have the best form but I don't think it's a standard that's unmatchable by a, by a properly good two-year-old. Okay. Uh, there's a few in there that could get there. Right. Uh, Simon Clare, what have you got? Yeah, I've got a few interesting things. It, it, it's a big stats race. Since, it, since the um, race has moved to the, its September position, of the last eight runnings, four have been won by Morney winners, which points you, in theory, towards Van Dijk. Uh, all of them bar one, one last time out in group company. Mm. Um, and that was the, the, the one that came second in the Flying, in flying Childers was a 25 to 1 winner of the last line. So it does think, you know, th th there's horses here like Jazura's third favourite, well beaten last time, Elite State is well beaten last time. Look, you know, these, st these uh, sort of stats are there to be broken. But Starlust. You're right, but you've got a Jim Crack and a Serenia, yeah. a winner. Yeah, Starlust won the group three Serenia, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Like, there's all the right yeah. winners that are right races turning yeah. up. And Lake yeah, Forest, yeah. like you said, won the Jim Crack. That Astaire did that uh, double back in 2013. So it's, I think it's a very interesting race. And the other thing we, we didn't touch on was obviously this River Tiber where Aidan O'Brien told everyone before the morning he, you know, he wasn't going to be fully wound up, ran a perfectly commendable race in second. So now you have to decide. Um, do, do you believe that and he's going to step up and he's done this a few times he did it with August Rodin this season hasn't he in the um, after the King George blowout and again it's um, a good job he's got the right the, you know the right owners and, and you know yeah. because if if I had an horse and they said oh great we're going for a group one he said like, oh actually we haven't but the point is, I think Aidan O'Brien is one of those people who people say he never tells you anything. And, so, and he does have that habit of yeah. saying, listen, listen. But actually, half the time, you, you realise you're yeah. not listening hard enough. And he sometimes <laughs> tells you. And when this thing hoses up tomorrow, you think, well, he kind of told us all that, you know, he wasn't fully wound up and, ran a, and must have run a very good race in the second in the morning. So, it, you know, so I, I, think it's a, I think it's a really interesting race. This, for all those sort of form lines, the likes of Starlust and Lake, Lake uh, Forest, you wouldn't rule out. Task Force, I thought if I did write down some notes on Rafe Beckett, because I was sort of thinking, he, he, you know, he's been a big trainer for a few years, but this season's off the chart. He's had mm. 106 winners already, mo most ever, uh, 3 million prize money, way more than he's ever had before already, and he's operating at a 22% strike rate, which is his highest strike rate ever. And, you know, he's got runners across the two days. I mean, you know, Rafe Beckett, who's a, 
This say, is big he's, he's stepped up and get another gear this 106 season. 106 winners at 22%. That's that's <laughs> top stable quality. That's, you know, that's, that's stout in the big yeah. days and Gosden sort yeah. of level, isn't it? Just and he's, and he, and I always have him down as an autumn trainer as well. So what the hell is he going to do in the autumn? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the fact, and then I think so, to, to, then so the fact he's having all these winners, he's got all these good horses, and he's chosen Task Force, and he's he point, you know, pinpointed it from some time ago. Again, you know, you look at that and say, Task mm. Force each way, that, you know, nice solid bet for the middle part. Uh, what were you going to say, Tom? Well, also he's had about thirty-five two-year-old winners, isn't he? You yeah. don't, ex you don't, you don't have him down as a two-year-old trainer. You have him down as, a, you know, a bloke that takes time with his horses, and they all come to good, come good in the three-year-old career. So to have thirty-two-year-old winners. Yeah, and he had the first time out winner, a two-year-old today, absolutely dot up as well. Okay, Middle Park uh, could be more open than the betting suggests. Uh, how are we playing it, Keith? I'm not. <laughs> Fair sure. enough, Tom <laughs> Siegel. Good man. Well, I back Task Force and have a little bit on Give Me the Beat Boys, but uh, I probably should be doing what Keith's done. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, I'm going to have a little nibble on Starlust each way. I think he's uh, he's too big. And Tom, do us a favour, just pop a lamp on while we uh, set up the Cambridgeshire, will you? Right. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we've got an in the nose special, actually, I haven't mentioned. Set Van Dyke to win by over one length. So if you think Van Dyke's going to win, it's 13 to 8 in the market, 7 to 2 to win by over one length. So, uh, but. Uh, I don't have a strong. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if River Tide, but it just does what Aidan O'Brien always does and hoses up. And we all sort of go, oh, God, he kind of told us. But a, a task force, I, I, I'm drawn in by the Rafe Beckett form and Tom's confidence. I think task force for me. Fair enough. Task force 7 and 1 there. Uh, on to the, uh, the Cambridge. Just the 34 runners to go through uh, and then three more races at Newmarket and then the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. So uh, I hope you can all speak very quickly. <laughs> uh, but uh, just what. Uh, uh, had a, uh, a very uh, good day uh, today at Newmarket, uh, and they could have a very good day uh, to, uh, tomorrow as well, especially if uh, Task Force wins. But uh, Greek order is 7-2 to two for uh, the Charters, with Osher Murphy in the saddle, drawn 25 uh, as well, which could be key, uh, but it's 7-2 to two for the Cambridgeshire. Everything else is double figures. Dual Identity 11s, Crackshot 11s, Merlin the Wizard 14s with Sanga, and Astro King 16-1 to one Liberty Lane and Killy Beggs Warrior, uh, and bigger prices the rest. The likes of Oviedo has got a cracking chance. Last year's winner, Majestic, Haunted Dream, Rattling each way, by, uh, each way bet, in my opinion. Uh, Killy Beggs Warrior, uh, in fact, he's been uh, nibbled in at 16 to 1 already. Paradis has got half decent form as well. Uh, but uh, Tom Siegel, uh, he, uh, he loves a Cambridgeshire oh, yeah. without the, the handicap fiend that is Paul Keeley. You, uh, you've taken the Cambridgeshire in, into your heart. Uh, everyone's saying Greek Order could well be uh, a group horse in a handicap, but. A lot of the group horses in a handicap in the in the Cambridgeshire have already shown a bit more than this horse has. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, he's obviously works the house, doesn't he? Because every time he's running a race, they all seem to everyone seems to back him off the boards. And he was really impressive at, at Newbury last time. The second came out and won a race at at uh, Doncaster. And I have no doubt he's a lot better than his handicap mark. What I do have a doubt about is whether he's going to like fast ground. No one seems to be thinking that he might not like the conditions. I mean, Newmarket coming down in the dip. We saw it today. I don't know if you saw the, the Frankie Dettori filly in the second race and even in the first race. The two horses Frankie Dettori rode in the first two races seemed to hate Newmarket. One of them won and one of them came second because they, they, were, they were classy. But I'm worried about him on the ground myself. His brother Sangarius didn't like fast ground. Uh, he's only his best form's clearly on soft ground. So if it got very quick, I would be worried about him. And seven to two, for that reason, I think it's, it's ridiculously short. <clears throat> I was on dual identity last year and still can't believe he didn't win. So I am very scared of him. And I do think Crackshot's quite an interesting horse as well. But uh, I quite like. I mean, I, when I did the, the race anti post, I was on Oviedo. And I still like Oviedo a lot. I think he's the perfect type for the race. What I don't like is stall one. Now, I don't know if I don't know where the draw is going to be. People say it's definitely going to be high. I have no clue and I will not even be bothering to think mm. about it because you just don't know. Mm. Last year, the low numbers looked like they were going to win until the last you know, 20 yards. Low numbers have often won in the past, talking about Blue Monday. Last, last, I mean, it's, it's weird. It just it, there was a, I don't know what happened in 2016, Tom, but before that, it was fairly open. 2016 onwards, 28, 29, 21, 29, 25, 21, 26. I don't, I don't, what, what happened that year? No idea. I've no idea what happened, but I'm not going to worry about it because as soon as um, you look at the Air Gold Cup last week, high numbers this, high numbers that, high numbers this, high numbers were beaten about a distance in the, yeah. in the Silver mm. Cup and they all moved to the other side the next time. So we don't actually know what's going to happen. 
Uh, if I was betting man, I would think it would be a high numbers simply because the best horses are over there. And I think the jockeys might be scared and therefore they all go over there. But if they all stay in a straight line, I wouldn't be too worried. He's my fa he's the one I like the best of Viedo. But I do think Killy Begg's warrior is quite an interesting horse as well. If you watch his last two runs, he was stopped in his run both times. Very unusual for a Mark Johnson. Of course. They never get hampered. This horse has been hampered twice and quite noticeably hampered. Both at York behind Astro King, Oviedo and Haunted Dream. Uh, and therefore challenged right away from those horses. And then in a big handicap at uh, the Cara on Champions Weekend, he also got hampered and still ran to finish fourth. I think fast ground, new market might be the key to him. So I just thought if he bowls along out front in a race where there isn't that much pace, I thought I could see him going well at a big price, Killy Begg's Warrior. But the one I really like is Oviedo, but I am scared of small one. Okay. Uh, yeah, Oviedo, finally at the Bethel team. I quite, like I said, I like Haunted Dream. I thought um, he just doesn't know how to run a bad race. He's only a four-year-old. This is his 22nd start, but he ran an absolute blinder at Newmarket last year when third uh, to Al Nafi in a really, really good race over a mile and a half. And he's getting better every run this year, pretty much. He's getting better. He's run to 104, 103, 107, 108. Um, he ran a cracker behind Ancient Rome, who's going for group honours at uh, Longchamp this weekend as well. And I thought he ran a, a nice race at uh, York last time out. Things didn't, he just didn't seem to be in the right position at the, uh, the right time. But he should be in the right position at the right time, given his draw. And like I said, he's got cracking course form. So haunted dream for me. Uh, but uh, the Cambridge is very much a haunted dream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> race know, a nightmare, as they like to call it. Have I ever backed the winner? I don't, I'm not sure I have. Um, <laughs> you know, because the thing is, horses, you, get, you do often get these horses, like a Greek order, that 72 and a 35 on a race is just something I'd never do. I just feel yeah. like it's just not what we're doing this for. I so, feel like Tom used to do that back in the day, like about 10 or 15 years ago, but then they go off 6-4 to four and win by 5 lengths. Well, that's it. Sometimes you get Lord North running in the Cambridgeshire, and then you, yeah. you can't do much about that, or apart from backing. Uh, so, you know, there, it's not as simple as that. It's just, you just got to put it down. This is my philosophy, and I'm just going to stick with that. And you just yeah. got to take the Lord North on the chin, I think, sometimes. Yeah. And then bet against them for the rest of their careers, too. Because you backed the horse that finished about fifth behind it in the Cambridgeshire, yeah. and you never liked the horse because of that. And but then one day... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. wins three or four group ones. Um, I my bet in this race looks a little bit less smart than it did uh, last night. I I thought Crack Shot came out when I saw the declarations. Obviously been pulled out Newmarket today because you maybe unexpectedly got in this race. An 88 rated three year old wouldn't often get in the Cambridgeshire, yeah. but snuck in this year. Got a crack and draw two and 31. You know that's the sort of side you want to be on. Uh, hopefully, and um, historically in recent years. Uh, and I just think he's a horse that keeps improving. You know he's, he looked still green when he won at Newbury last time by half a length. Before that, he'd run for over 10 for the first time, beaten eight and a half lengths, but the winner won by six. It was uh, Royal Rhyme, the really good horse that's going to run in the champion stakes. So it wasn't a bad run by any means. Dam ran her best race at Newmarket in midsummer fast ground, so I'm not so worried about the ground. Just a lot going for this horse, I thought, and at 16s he was a tremendous bet. At 11, 12 to 1, he's, he's still a pretty good bet, especially with the enhanced places at six that you're paying. Six seven. places, yeah. So, you know, that's the sort of, that, especially if he's drawn on what's perceived to be the right sort of side. Yeah. You're, uh, you're looking at a pretty good each way bet. Okay, yeah, and a connection to uh, uh, see Bell Rock place mm. a couple of years ago. Uh, but yeah, I guess that is the point with Greek order. Yeah, the, the, the unexposed three year olds who turn out to be group horses have often done more than this horse has in the past. But like Crack Shop, maybe there were, there were more higher rated horses in there, so you had to be higher rated to get in. Yeah. So it's maybe that off 95, he's, he's got a lot to do it to play with. But again, he's, he's seven or two. And, and what's interesting about these huge, these are big betting, this is a big betting race, one of the big betting handicaps of the year, and, and Greek order will be a shocking result. For all there are 35 runners, it's a huge number of people will just go, do you know what, he's the best horse, he could well just win. And actually two favourites for one of the last 10 years, which given the number of runners every year, shows you that they, they win often enough, actually, as he said. So, um, so there'll be a huge amount of support for him. He's drawn well, we believe, based on the last seven years, between that sort of 20, what, the magic 21 and 29 slot. I, I um, would say, by the way, as well, that one of those favourites was Educate, which I'm pretty sure wasn't a favourite until Tom had his say in the well, race. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you, you, you were... You Made him favourite. Yeah, it was about twice the price when you put it up, wasn't it, Tom? Yeah, yeah, I liked Educate. Yeah, that was, an, that was a good day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but anyway, listen. So, so, so I think Greek order, you know, very solid. He will be, you know, a, a well backed and, and an awful result. So we don't want him to win. Uh, been plenty of money for dual identity and crack shot. Keely Beggs Warrior. I'm sure that's Tom's influence. The other one who's been well backed and he's the one I like is Majestic. Won the race last mm. year. There's only I think only Bronze Angel is a dual winner and, and had a gap mm. between 
you know, re return, uh, return victories. But I just looked at this. He won, he won last year of 86. He's running off 89. But the thing that I was drawn to, and I love this running to form percentage you have in the Racing Post. Do you like it? I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, you better say yes because it's no, in your it's a, paper. Well, exactly. But it's, 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 a, it's a rough game, but it's, it's a, a handy game. one. OK, so the, he's, he's got an 89% running to form, uh, Jack Channon. And I looked at his last 18 runners. Only one was beaten more than two and three quarter lengths of those 18. He's had eight. He's only had one, he's only had one he's win. Had, he's only had one win, but eight seconds. Them. Exactly. They're yeah. all running. They're all running brilliantly. And so I just thought Majestic, you know, won the race last year. Last couple of runs were on soft ground. He loves fast ground. Yeah. Well drawn, I think, in 29 or 30. I just thought, and there has been a bit of money. 25 is into 18. I've been back to him, to be fair. But I just thought Majestic, everything's pointed to another big run. Okay, yeah. Majestic, who uh, is uh, uh, is by conduit. Oh, lovely. It was fourth in the yeah. in See the Stars Art. Well, it's weird to think of Conduit as an art course because he was more famous for doing everything else, yeah. winning ledgers and yeah, Beatles Cup Peter's turfs. Cup and turf. third in that eclipse, that was See the Stars' best oh, run. Was, yeah. yeah. When he was third, he left for dead in an eclipse. That was a good horse, and he left yeah. for dead by Coral See the Stars and Conduit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, with that bad Keith. Yeah. Bingo. Um, <laughs> sorry, quick. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to uh, hurry this up before you go in, down. In the no special, guys. very quickly. A uh, Greek order uh, is obviously seven to two. Roger, Harry, and Roger Charlton to win the uh, Cambridgeshire. We're going 130 from 11 to four. You get Merlin the Wizard chucked in, so you take a slightly shorter price, but you get Merlin the Woz Wizard, who's unfortunately to one chance as well. So 130 okay. the pair. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's the, the Cambridgeshire then uh, for you. Uh, let's rattle through these last three opening markets so we can get properly stuck in uh, to, uh, to it's a long shot. Uh, we have a, a 20 runner, Philly's made, and for the two year olds uh, with barely any form to go on, strutting is five to two, <laughs> uh, and it's four to one bar those. Uh, any thoughts in 10 seconds, Keith or Tom? Oh. No? No, I, I like the uh, back, the. the, the God, I've 10 seconds gone already. I like the sort of background that True Cyan has, like the pedigree for this sort of race. Lunch here, loads of runs are two at the dam, but really, we are guessing in this yeah. race. Yes, we are indeed. Uh, any offers before I move on, sir? Not on the race. Is the Nova's the only one who looks like it's shortened in the betting, the stout two year old? And okay. that's so far. But look at the market tomorrow. Okay, really good race. Not a really good betting race. So let's move on for the, uh, the 450. Uh, a, a Phillies nursery here uh, where uh, Wild Goddess falling for you and Keita Kotai are 9 to 2 co favourites. Misinformation is 5 to 1. Shinja Dai is 7's Live My Life 17 to 2 and 10 to 1 and bigger the rest. This is an open uh, race for sure. Plenty of eye catches on the last few starts, mostly Keita Kotai at uh, York. Uh, run a bit of a blinder. Uh, Tom Siegel, what's the angle here? Uh, I haven't really got one, if truth, but I thought misinformation was quite impressive. I know the ground's quite different to when she won last time, but I thought she looked quite good in the form of previous to that, but I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, was was pretty decent as well. So she'd do for me, uh, it was Windsor, wasn't it? Not good, but, but uh, I thought she was good at Ascot, and I think while it was only good down there, I think she'll be final past ground. So she'll do for me. Okay, Listen, Keith, do you have a view before? Uh, no, but uh, expensive queen have caught my eye a little bit, but it's a soft ground pedigree, so I've, I've been cooled on her. Okay, Simon, any offers, any angles? No, uh, just misinformation, same as Tom, stepping up for furlong from six, I think all four runs have been at six furlongs, I think. Um, misinf and Andrew Balding, you know, was quite sort of positive about her after a, his last, it's like his, his, him, is it, the last run. Um, so I thought misinformation is right. Okay, there you go. Uh, and finally, the 525 at Newmarket is a, a 10 minute not to 105 uh, seven furlong handicap, which again would normally, uh, if it wasn't such a cracking weekend, be one of the features. But Star of Orion is three to one. Glenn Finn and four to one. Seven to one accidental agent. Fifteen to two beige and bandit and bless him. And eight to one and bigger the rest. Uh, loads of horses here, Keith. Are you back behind uh, subsequent group winners in handicaps in the past? Uh, <laughs> but one of Rafe Beckett's Star of Orion. This is his time of year. Yeah, it is. And uh, although usually he's in form on a bit soft ground, uh, yeah. so you know you can maybe make that sort of case against him. Uh, I think the, the, there's a horse in there called Darkness that ran a really good race in the Gold Mile not that long ago, one on fast ground in the summer. I don't think he's much of a soft ground horse as his French form would maybe have you believe. Whether he wants it rattling quick like it might be tomorrow might be different. Uh, but he's somebody, he's a horse I had a bit of an eye on, but it's not, I've not gone and backed him already or anything. Okay, fair enough. I was quite interested in modesty uh, here. Uh, at, uh, at 8 to 1, a horse is clearly just not been getting home over a mile, uh, hung across the track at York, uh, but I get the feeling that was probably more uh, to the, uh, the gas tank flashing red, and he's definitely bred to uh, appreciate a drop back in trip. What about you, Tom? Uh, I'm going to go, you're not going to believe it, but I think Bless Him's going to run really well. Mm. I think the faster the ground, the better he is. I think he's on a handicap mark and can win off. He's three pounds lower than when he was fourth in the Bunbury Cup. I think he'll get some pace because I think Glenn Finnan and Darkness like going forward. And that's the key to me. We had no chance in the Quinnell race at Ascot last time because they crawled and let Quinnell win. So 
Uh, I think, bless him, it will run well at 15 to 2 okay. tomorrow. A price not to be sneezed at uh, for the, the 5.25. Uh, right, before we get on to the arc, if you're watching right now, uh, like the stream, OK? <laughs> Go on, give it a like. Give it a like. You can use your thumb if you want. Press the, uh, press the key on your keyboard. Uh, or use the mouse like uh, a normal person. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's uh, new market uh, done and dusted. I think this uh, show might go uh, uh, a little bit late. You haven't got a very quick train to catch, anyone of you? Not that quick. No? Uh, New order to see, but they're not on until about 8.30. Oh, so yeah, that's yeah. fine. Uh, OK, let's move on to the, uh, the pre the triumph. And Tom won't have a say in this, really, particularly, because uh, <laughs> no. he's got to write it up tomorrow for the paper. Uh, Ace Impact, 3-1 to one favourite for the, the big race. Uh, it is 11-2 Hockham, 6-1 to one continuous, 13-2 to two Westover, 8-1 to one Feed the Flame, 9-1 to one through 7 season, 12-1 to one Fantastic Moon, 14-1 to one, uh, is, uh, is Bay Bridge. Uh, and uh, hopefully just wait for the... Uh, uh, the prices to uh, to switch there and see the rest of the um, uh, the rest of the uh, the runners and uh, there we go still waiting <laughs> okay what do we got still waiting okay come on just beat them up I'll just make them <laughs> the up screen's mind. frozen okay fair enough uh, Ace Impact uh, three two there we go free win twenty to one with Plaster Carousel twenty five is Ernesto and Sim Camille thirty three is Mister Hollywood uh, and Ayazark and Sisfahan are a hundred to one outsiders of the bunch but yeah uh, we have to go back to Bago in two thousand. And four, the last horse who was unproven over the trip who won a Breedler Art de Triomphe. Ace Impact has been spectacularly impressive uh, 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 on a couple of his starts, maybe not as much last time out. Um, and then we've got Ledger winners, King George winners, Japanese Raiders, German Raiders, which might actually have more of a say in it given the, the history of this race. Um, but yeah, people are going to go crazy for Ace Impact, but is he there to be, there to be shot at? Yeah, it is, it's probably deserves to be favourite for an open arc, which is exactly what this is. Uh, no more than that, you know, the, the times are pretty good in the, uh, in the jockey club, but he beat two non-stairs, I thought, and you know, the fourth that went on to win the Grand Prix de Paris, Feed the Flame, he was coming straight at Maidens, effectively. So mm. I, I think you can have a little bit of a shot at him. Uh, it's a deep field, uh, and I think you and I are going to agree, Ross, because I think your favourite old horse, Bay Bridge. I was looking at this race last night and I'd been looking at it for hours and couldn't find anything because I was all over some Camille anti-post. But yeah. that draw in 15 is, it's off-putting, I'm going to let the anti-post slip ride, I don't hold up the hope I did. And then I thought, why the hell is Bay Bridge 14-1 to for this race? I've, I was ringing to you and I think what would happen if, if Stouty had bro broken the habit of a lifetime and stood in the paddock, this winner's enclosure <laughs> after the champion stake last year and said, delighted for the owners, lads, but really this is all about this horse winning the arc at five. I think there's more chance of Tom Siegel Come and sit cycling there. to Longchamp <laughs> in time for this race on Sunday than Stout doing that. But the, the, the point sort of is, is that if the arc had been the stated aim for this horse, which it had, and partly that was because of Desert Crown, if the arc had been the stadium for this horse from the start, we would have seen the Ghani for what it was, a sighting at the track. We would have seen the Tats Gold Cup for what it was, a valiant attempt to just to give Luxembourg a start and nearly beat him over a mile two. Mm -hmm. And we would have seen the September stakes for what it was, a perfect arc prep. And this horse would be, same price as sort of Hookham, Continuous and Westover. He's a better horse than Westover for me. Uh, and I just think 14 is a ridiculous price. And well done to Coral, because I backed this horse last night. He was best price 14 to 1 with Coral. I thought yeah. there's no chance that'll still be there when I go in in the road tomorrow. This price is going to come right in, but they're still standing the 14s. I don't expect him to go off as big as that. Okay, yeah. I mean, he went to an RPR of 123 at Kempton last time out. First start over a mile and a half, and it and barely broke a sweat doing it as well. So, yeah, he, I mean, he is fascinating. If, if he does win this, I'm going to I'm going to dig out that clip of when he won the London Gold Cup, and I said he oh, won. Oh, it's the well future. worn. It's, it's well more worn than that. Uh, no, there's no money left from the treasury. That's <laughs> your equivalent of that, isn't it? Well, I mean, he's only won one Group 1 so far, so I've, <laughs> yeah. only, I've only been able to, to, to milk it once, to be fair. But you're right, I mean, and, 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 and Sir Michael Stout does not... <laughs> he doesn't enter horses for fun in these kind of races. Um, it would have been so easy to go to the Champion Stakes. It would have been so easy yeah. just to go, he won that last year, let's yes, go yeah, for it. But they've not done that. And it's... I was a bit surprised, I said, when he won at Kempton, I was like, well, yeah, of course, but... And I was like, hang on, he actually hasn't run over a mile and a half yet. Mm -hmm. um, but in my head, he's... He's a mile and a yeah. half or what? Because he, he looks he's, like a mile and a half He's looked at this year all of a sudden, hasn't he? He looked at against Luxembourg, who had yeah. the run of the race. He looked at in, in the uh, in the Ghani. You know, the, it I all makes sense. I think I just assume that all Sir Michael Stout's horses are mile and a half horses yeah. in time. So it's, uh, I just think it's it just one of those moments that just all sort of made sense a little bit. And it turns yeah. out it fell the same place as you, Ross. What a great place to be. There you go. Welcome <laughs> to the club, mate. Welcome and to the club. And there's something, you know, it's funny. I mean, when I, was, when I sort of fell in love with racing, it, that, it was, that was stout all over. His horses would always peak at four and five. Pilsudski, yeah. did Pilsudski win a Cambridge and then go on to be a group one 
when I think, well, I think it was yeah. you know, Singspiel, they were horses. He would de develop them, and Baybridge has followed that pattern. Yeah, so you know, and well, Regal Reality Fed is on a really good race. Oh. He's old enough to smoke. Yeah. So I mean, I would love it. <laughs> I would love it if Baybridge was to win, and it doesn't look a super. I don't think it's a super strong arc, is it? I mean, it, that pre de Jockey Club form isn't isn't great. Isn't sensational. I mean, the times are pretty good, but yeah, Bear but form's not very good at all. On, you know, I know mm -hmm. if he's the one, but he's been beat last time, and but uh, so yeah, I just thought that, you know, Westover ran. Very well last year on that all you know, really soft heavy ground, much better horse on fast ground. I thought he, I thought, and he's been a good fun this season. Him and Hookham, there's not much between them on King George. I thought Westover would be there, you know, will be there at the finish. Hookham probably. I thought maybe just the fact that Westover's run at the tracks, so, you know, I'd probably favour Westover or Hookham. But um, and now I, I, I would be cheering on Bay Bridge. I'm a big Michael, Sir Michael Stout fan oh, from the nostalgia point of view. And in the past, you know, he's, he he wouldn't we work for, and obviously. That was a big. It was a big monkey on his back, wasn't it? That he'd won all the yeah. the big middle distance mm. races, but he hadn't won the arc. And then Workforce won it. The only horse he's run since is uh, Coral Eclipse winner uh, Ulysses, Lovely. who finished third behind a Nabal. Um, and you think surely he must have well, won yeah, at least one horse. He's won a million derbies. Of course, he's yeah, won loads exactly. of horses in there. Oh, and it, obviously, it helps if your derby winners don't get injured repeatedly. Well, that's true. Yeah. Um, but you know, like yeah, Pilsuski was second in an arc. Um, Conduit was fourth in an arc. Like, yeah. the worse horses than Bay Bridge mm. have. Um, don't you dare talk about Conduit like that. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare. I think, you know, this, I think it, that's why it's one of those races. I think the, you, you, I, there's nothing I fancy strongly, and there's an element of almost who would you like, you know, who you're cheering on. I think Bay Bridge yeah. is one of them. I think, the, I think the English horses will run well, all three of them, really. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the King George form looks, it, it's clearly very, very good, Tom, but one's buried down the inner and one's going to be stuck out wide. Uh, you made an interesting point about continuous. Oh, legend winners can't never win this race, mm -hmm. but uh, Continuous didn't look, he wasn't a ledger horse before he won at York, and I still, I still don't think of him as a ledger horse, but the way he won at York, that's a proper, that's a, that's a proper mile and a half horse. Yeah, it's all over nonsense that, isn't it, though, where people say ledger winners, oh, I can't win the arc, what a load of rubbish, you know, loads of them have tried, loads of them have run better races, they just bump into horses that are better than them on the day, it's, yeah. I mean, Continuous, I feel win it, I'm not sure he's good enough, but he might be. Uh, I'm not too keen on Hookham or Westover. I thought that, that I, my theory about this race, and I might be wrong, because uh, I am wrong a lot, uh, is that the ground is going to be quick and everyone thinks it's going to be soft. I have done so many French races over the years expecting it to be soft and the jockeys come in after the first race and go, oh, it's good to firm out there. And I, there's no rain forecast. They haven't had rain for five days. They're not watering. So I think the ground's going to be a lot quicker than people are expecting. And I think that helps Ace Impact quite a bit. I think it goes against Bay Bridge a bit. I get all what you said about him. But I do think he'd like soft the ground it, to be at his best. Uh, I thought the interesting cut pair were Keith's ones he's gone off. Sim Camille, I don't care about draws, as you well know. I'm not worried about track 15. As faster the ground, the easier it is to, to not worry about those. I think on soft ground, they churn up the middle of the track when they bring the rail in. And therefore, that's why those ones on the outside never have a chance. I think he'll have no problem getting in. I think he'll go well. Yeah, and you're I right. I mean, Golden Horn won it from 14, found from 12, and they were both good ground arcs. So. Yeah, exactly. One was a short either, wasn't it? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> fair Another one was a remarkable ride from the Tory. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, but you could, you could, you could. Well, come, I hope he wins too, lads. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can do Draws are a load of rubbish, and but I think. Fantastic Moon, the German horse, has a chance too. Uh, he is unbeaten on fast ground on over a mile and a half. don't think there was the remotest bit of a fluke about the when he won the Niel the other day. You watch back the German derby, and I know it wasn't a brilliant German derby, but I think German middle distance horses are better than ours. That's for sure. So... Uh, uh, that's because we're bringing more for speed. Tom. People, that's that's keep, people keep people keep overlooking this German form because it's mile and a half easy ground, and, and they keep overlooking. And that was why Sim Camille was for ages, as we said. Yeah, yeah. It was a twelve chance you could back at twenty five for a long, long time. Well, I mean, but yeah, it's, it, it's, Sim Camille. I had right down four races over a mile and a half. It was one, two group one, two group twos in a group one. First and second every run at Longchamp. One hundred eighteen, one hundred nineteen last four runs, which is better than Torquay de Tasso before winning this race. Mm -hmm. If yeah, if that fifteen box isn't uh, an issue, Sim Camille is a huge price. And Fantastic Moon. Going back to Fantastic Moon, while you try and whack me off it, uh, I think German. I think German horses that ran in the German Derby should have won the last three arcs. I think Torquata Tasso did. I thought Inswoop should have beaten uh, Sotsas, and I thought Torquata Tasso should have won last year from Trap Twenty Six or whatever he won, yeah. won, wherever he was. So you can make a case, and I re very regularly do, that German middle distance horses are better than ours. 
So I do think that they are massively underestimated. As I say, if you watch back the Deutsche Derby last, uh, from earlier in the season, he was right out the back and sprinted past the whole field to win by three. He's won the Niel. He's unbeaten on fast ground over a mile and a half. I think he's going to run really well if the conditions are as I think they're going to be. I wonder if the part of this German theory is because a lot of the Group 1 races are backloaded in the summer. German Derby's in July. Mm. You know, yeah. these, the reason O'Brien's three-year-olds often do badly is because they're primed for the Derby. And they're over the top by October. Yeah. The German horses they just have an extra month, six weeks of coming into it. They're not over the top by arc time. Maybe that's part of it. Could yeah. be, or they just could be better. They could be better. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> well, yeah. Or they, yeah, they, they. I mean, like you said, that they, they're sent. You look at all the German sires. They're all. They've all run five thousand times over a mile and a half. Mm -hmm. And then they, they're off to stud, and they breed horses who run five thousand times over a mile and a half. Um, yeah. Want to win the Commonwealth Cup? We don't care about the Ark and the Ark <laughs> yeah. and the Irish Derby and the. And, and, I mean, the Fantastic Moon beat oh, Feed the well, Flame last time out. Why, why is Feed the Flame H one and Fantastic? Uh, they're, they're assuming that's one of those typical yeah. French prep races, aren't they? It was quite. They? It was. It was yeah. much doubt. I, I mean, the Torquay to Tasso of this though is Mr. Hollywood, who mm. um, wasn't far behind Fantastic Moon at uh, at Hamburg and, and went for home and then got passed by. Uh, fantastic moon, but then was nuttered on the line. On while what we're was trying, a prep. while we're trying to farm like nice little bits on big outsiders, a plastic carousel. I'm quite annoyed that I didn't put her up an anti post price wise. <laughs> where I put Emily up John instead because I thought she was more likely to run. Are we getting all these in so they can say? Oh yeah, definitely. We oh, well, there's one we haven't mentioned. Quit mentioned, given that there's always a Japanese runner in the shows yeah. every year. They've yet to win it. We were just saying mm. that we, the fact we even even mentioned three seven C's, the mayor, sec, fifty five to one with second to Equinox is one of the best horses on the planet. It would almost be a bit disappointing if she was to pop up and become the first Japanese because we're not talking about her or yeah. not focusing. But fast ground art will help her. Yep. So what do Equinox? A penny for Equinox's connections thoughts, eh? Well, we'll try and get him on the line. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Uh, we're going to be at the we're going to be at the Equinox if we keep going at this uh, rate. Uh, okay. Uh, the arc angle for you, Tom, is well uh, at the moment because I'll have to write it up tomorrow. At the moment, I like fantastic. Moon, I just think if you look at Racing Post ratings, he's rated, rated the same as Feet of Flame and Continuous and all those other three. Obviously, he's three pounds behind Ace Impact and he's 14 to one, and I don't think he should be. Okay, I'll uh, Bay Bridge, Sim Camille, Mr. Hollywood. There you go. Uh, there's, your, there's your <laughs> try cast. I'll go Bay Bridge, Sim Camille, Plastic Carousel. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm just all over Rafe Beck at the moment. So, Westover, I think he's going to win and make a season to remember if it isn't already for Rafe Beckett. Lovely stuff. Right, OK, let's get the naps then on uh, a, a big weekend. Starting off with you, Mr Tom Siegel. Uh, well, uh, can I go to France tomorrow and go for a run for Oscar in the Cadran, please? Absolutely. I just think that, I just think that True Shan, I, I don't trust True Shan anymore. I think horses that do everything wrong and win races, it's not a testament to their ability. It's a testament to how rubbish everything else ran in the race. So I'm not... I'm not having true Shan. Uh, if the ground's quick, I'm not sure Emily Dickinson will stay two and a half miles. I don't think she did in the, in the Ascot Gold Cup. And I think if the ground's decent, run for Oscar can run past the pair of them in the first time blinkers. OK. Keith Melrose, your nap. Cast your mind back a long, long way because it's Ghost Rider in the first race we did in the Royal Lodge. There you go. Simon? Majestic on my Jack Channon running to form stats. Majestic to repeat last year's win in the Cambridge. OK, lovely stuff. Uh, and I'll go with Persian Dreamer to win the Sheevely Park uh, uh, and continue her love affair with Newmarket. Thanks everyone for watching. If you haven't already, like the stream and have a wonderful weekend. Hope you back a few winners.